All right. Uh, this thing's happening right now. I'm just trying to keep track of all of this for you. Uh, let me just start at the top here. California Governor Newsom has just ordered the entire state population into lockdown. 40 million Californians ordered to stay home as U.S. cases have doubled in the last two days. Well, we told you this. How long ago? Over two months, we've been doing the third hour of the program every night with Dr. Henry Nyman, Ph.D., laying this all out every day, tracing it, tracking it, forecasting it, predicting what was coming. Henry has not been wrong about any of it. And what we're seeing now is the beginning of the change of our entire society into the new world order. This is going to last for a long time, as long as necessary. This is a bad, bad virus. All California residents now must stay home. The government, the Trump regime, excuse me, the Kushner regime, Mitch McConnell's plan will pay all Americans $1,200. If there's a couple, they get $2,400. This is a one-time payment. How long do you think that's going to last? As we roll into the fall and the second wave of this shows up, how long will these lockdowns remain in place? This will lead to a call for universal income. A basic living wage for all people in this country. Watch. This is where it's, it's going to socialism. It's all going to hardcore socialist, Bolshevik, Marxist, communistic socialism. President Trump today, who is said to be deathly afraid of the virus and apparently was tested twice, according to what we're hearing, and claims to be negative, told the reporters at the news conference today, you're too close to me. He ordered them all to back up. They didn't do it, but next time they'll be further back. So it's, it's all crazy. Here to help make a little sense out of it is is uh, Jordan Maxwell, whom I've known for just about 25 years now, and who has spent 60 years of his life studying how the game is played. Jordan, welcome back. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's happy to be back. And, uh, my goodness, I don't even know what to say or where to start. It's incredible the world we live in. <clears throat> it's I've all come being across changed. some interesting stuff, though. Yeah. It's all being changed. This is, this is all, this is all being done by design. This whole thing. It's all being changed. Most of these businesses in America that are, are small businesses that are going out of business, they'll never come back. This is more consolidation. Big box stores, big corporations online. It's the concentration of power again. Once again, we see what's going on. Go ahead, Jordan. No doubt about it. And uh, <clears throat> this whole thing about shutting people down, it breaks down to the shutting the country down, the shutting us all down as individuals. And and it's yes, sir. because yes, of sir. this whole right. Marxist communist uh, apparatus that's been growing on us like a, a you know like a cancer for so many years. After the Second World War was over, we started allowing Marxist, Leninist, communists to be, become professors and teachers in our school, and even here in Arizona. We had a big demonstration, a massive, massive demonstration of teachers wanting more money because they are, they are starving, they said. They need more money. And the name of their demonstration was Red for Ed. Ed for Red. <laughs> Education <laughs> for Red. And uh -huh. they all wore red car, red costumes, red hats, yeah. red yeah. sweaters. But nobody seems to have the brains enough to figure out what is the symbolism. Mm -hmm. Re education for red or red for education, red for ed. Red is a symbol for communism. And so today in Arizona, we're delighted to show the world our whole educational system in Arizona is run by communists. 
read for Ed. I'm just amazed at how ignorant and ill-informed teachers are. People who are supposedly teaching our youth have no idea in the world where they're getting their paychecks from, how they're being manipulated into accepting a new world order of world communism, and they are bringing our young children and our babies and our children into that new order because the children have no idea in the world what's going on. They were born as babies. They don't know. And so... Since the teachers don't know, the politicians do know, but they don't care. It's the, it's the name of the oh, future. No. It's the wave of the no, future. No, they so they're that's going true. along with it because that's the way you get elected. Yep. Yep. And so and it's just an, uh, uh, an unimaginable, miserable situation that the human race has found itself in. And it seems to be the wave of the future. As uh, Khrushchev said, told Kennedy before he was assassinated communism is the wave of the future we're going to rule the world one day and you will wake up one day and find out you're in a communist world and you'll never know how it happened why because the people of America are so profoundly ignorant and the governmental system is a Marxist Leninist communist system and we have no idea what that means. We have no idea where it comes from. And no. we're unread, ill-informed, and now we're just slaves. So, I mean, you and I have been talking about this for so long. I'm just tired of talking about it. But I think we are all beginning to see the collapse of our great country. The United States of America is no longer on its feet. It's crawling on its knees and we're being we're being led into and programmed into accepting a system which I cannot believe that we are foolish enough not to see. But we don't. Our teachers do not see it. <clears throat> and in relation to something I have found that to be extraordinarily important and interesting, I'm I'm going to do a whole new video on this subject. And it deals with the religio-political world system that I've been talking about since 1959. Some 60 years ago, I began talking about this subject, and it was not until 1967 that I came across some interesting information in a yearbook, in the, uh, in the yearbook encyclopedia, uh, when I was looking up Russia and I was looking at the information I could find on the Communist Party. And so uh-huh. I was in Glendale, California, looking at in the Glendale Library. And I had the yearbook encyclopedia. And uh, there was a picture of the Soviet uh, Red Square. And it was talking about the symbol for world communism or for, for the Soviet Union's national coat of arms. Mm-hmm. And in that symbol, it shows, and it's a very well-known symbol for the Soviet Union, not today. Most people don't even know what the Soviet Union was today. But That's it true. was the center for world communism. And they provided for us our educational institutions in America And, um, but the symbol was a rising sun behind the earth. And, and, and what, what the article had to say was only a couple of sentences. But when I read the article, the little few sentences that accompanied the picture of the, of the national arms, coat of arms for the Soviet Union, I immediately because I was well aware of the symbols, uh, of the whole world of symbolism, I immediately realized that there was something of profound value in what I was seeing as this Soviet communist symbol for the Soviet Union. And I realized immediately that this has to do 
with something so profoundly important is going to be is going to capture my attention and my and my imagination for the rest of my life. And I began reading and studying the symbolism of the Soviet Union. And the more I read, the more I began to see, the more I learned how much we have been lied to and deceived by our governmental systems, our education, our military industrial systems, but especially in our educational and religious systems that we in the Western world live under. And it's an extraordinary story, and I've done some videos on it. I've talked about it before, but I've found some new information. And the symbol of world communism is the sun rising behind a mountain range. That okay. is the symbol of the Soviet Union, was the sun rising behind the mountains of the east. Uh-huh. And it's used all over the world today. In all countries of the earth, you will see and the, and the institutions of the world that we live in, police departments, fire departments, sheriff's department, educational facilities, universities, uh, all the military arrangements around the world, all of these individual PowerPoints on the earth and all governments all over the world, we will see a sunrise behind a mountain range. Mm-hmm. And that is profoundly important because it's telling me that all over our earth, flat or round, all over <laughs> our earth, <laughs> we are taken over by a philosophy which we do not understand we have no idea where it comes from and it works beautifully to deceive the human family into accepting a world fascist communist state in which we are all participating on the earth today and this is something that I I come across some interesting information I wanted to bring out in relation to our religious beliefs. You've heard me talk about this many times before, but this time I have some new material. It's regarding a book called Wonders of the Wonders in the Sky by Jacques Vallée. Jacques Vallée is well known for his incredibly brilliant work about UFOs and, and right. the extraterrestrial work. But he's he been wrote at a it book long called time. One, yeah. yeah, he's been around for quite a long time. But his book is called Wonders in the Sky. Hmm. And Jack Fillet tells us that in the year of 1347 B.C., Pharaoh Akhenaten was walking along the side of a river <clears throat> when he happened to look up and saw a very large silver disc floating above his head, a UFO, if you will. <clears throat> and then a voice came out of the disc and told the pharaoh that he was supposed to build a new city in Egypt and call it El Akhenaten. This is the pharaoh, this the pharaoh did, and mm-hmm. also he was told, uh, the voice in the UFO told him, this new religion that was to be called the Akhenaten worship. And they was also told that the symbol of this new religion, Pharaoh should, should make known to the world that this new religion has a, has a symbol which will be a sun rising over a mountain range. A sunrise over the mountain range. Funniest thing. The mm-hmm. yes, the dawn of a new day. There it is, and that is the symbol for the Soviet Union was a sunrise, and all through Western civilization, you will see all the most important institutions. As I said, the police, the fire department, the city, the county, the state. All governmental emblems and symbols all feature a sunrise over a mountain range. That's what Pharaoh was told 
to make sure that this new religion, Akhenaten worship, would have the symbol of a sunrise over a mountain range. Well, today it's everywhere in your face all over the world. Now, this yeah. ancient UFO-inspired religion was called the Sun Disk Religion in ancient Egypt. The Sun Disk Religion. Because A-T-O and Aton was the name of the sun god of ancient Egypt. And today, Aton worship is still with us all over our earth today. And still with us today, thousands of years later. It's called Aton worship, A-T-O-N. Aton oh. worship today we call Christianity. It's the worship of the Aton, A-T-O-N, or the sun god of Egypt. And so the sun god of Egypt was referred to as the light of the world. And so today we still worship God's son, the light of the world, and who is our risen savior. Of course, the sun is your risen savior. If it doesn't rise every morning, we're dead in about three mm -hmm. weeks. And so, therefore, the question we need to ask ourselves for the first time to think about this is who owns the sun? Well, since we logically understand nobody on the earth can claim that they own the sun. Well, who owns the sun? I suppose if you're religious at all or if you're philosophical at all, you might want to reason that maybe God owns the sun because uh, theologically, theologically we say everything is owned by God, so God would own the sun that comes up in the morning, our risen Savior. And, of course, it is your risen Savior because if it don't come up, we're dead in three weeks. Because the earth will be covered with ice if the sun doesn't come up and save our lives. So God's sun is a center of energy, and, and the energy is life. And so the ancient Egyptians said if the sun were to selfishly keep its energy and not give it out to the planets and our solar system, the sun would probably last forever because he is nothing but energy. But because the sun is giving energy to the planets and happily on the earth is flooding us with energy so our crops will grow and our children will grow and we can grow, we, uh, we are living because the sun is giving us our energy. So therefore we say that God's sun has die, is dying to give us life. He has died to give us life because the sun is going to eventually die because it's giving away its energy. And so God's sun has died, has died to give us life on the earth. But what's interesting is when you start to ask the question, who owns the sun? Well, of course, God owns the sun. Well, then God's sun is the light of the world, as we said. From there, you can begin to build a whole theological foundation for Western civilization, which actually takes in all of the Eastern civilization because the sun rises in the east and in the shadows and it brings light to the world on the west. So we get all of our religious foundation for our belief system from the ancient east. And why? Because the sun rises in the east. So this story that Jacques Vallée tells about the Pharaoh Akhenaten walking along the river and seeing a very big UFO over his head, and the voice in the UFO said to start a new city in Egypt called El Akhenaten. Akhenaten is Akhenaten, Akhenaten, A-T-O-M, was the sun god of Egypt. And so Judaism has given to the Western world the worship of the Akhtan, the A-T-O-N, Akhtan, because all over the world and every uh, synagogue on the earth, no matter where you might go on the earth, all synagogues always have on their altars a, uh, the picture or the advertisement of the God of the Hebrews, the Jewish God, and his name is not to be spoken. You're not to use his name. 
Mm. You're told that uh, that his name is so important, God's name is mm. so holy, that you are not supposed to use it. But if you want to refer to the God of the Hebrews, you can refer to his name <clears throat> as a substitute name. It's called the Tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton is a the word is always inside of a sunburst on the altars in all synagogues. Everywhere you will go on the earth in any Jewish synagogue, you will always see a sunburst, the Akhtan worship, the sunburst right. on the altars. And the name of the God which you are told that you can use is Tetragram Aton. Tet, all right, let's break down Tetragram Aton, Aton, Tetragram. What does that mean? Tetra is four, and gram is letters. A-T-O-N is four letters. So if tetra is, is, program, is four. Time, you'll know that yeah. Fukushima, the greatest calamity... And gram is letters. Now, as I've been warning yep. since the and and, and tetragrammaton, A-T-O-N, is four letters. And especially up and down the entire... Correct? Yeah, well, what I'm it? saying is ak- Aknaton uh-huh. is a uh, tetragrammaton. Tetragrammaton is tetra is four. Right. Gram, G-R-A-M-M, is letters, like A, B, C, D. Sure. Tetragram, which is four letters for the worship of the Hebrew god, Aton. Tetragram, Aton. Yeah, that's what I was so saying. So, therefore, it's, Judaism it's, is worshiping the old ancient God of the Pharaohs, the Aton, the sun worship. So that's where we are today. We are all over the world accepting the, the worship of the tetragram Aton, the Got Aton it. worship of the symbol of the sun rising over the mountains of the east. Well, look and, at the, look at the Obama campaign logo, for example. It's always <laughs> the dawn of a new day. Dawn. dawn. No. Jordan has pointed this out so many times with so many Images, so many symbols, uh, so many advertising, uh, motifs. It's the same kind of thing. Hold on just a second, Jordan. I gotta thank our sponsors for making this program possible. We'll be right back with Mr. Jordan Maxwell after this. Okay, I welcome back. And if you missed it, uh, the entire state of California has been ordered into house arrest by the communist socialist government in that state and Governor Newsom. This is uh, really pushing and asking for big social, civic, shall we say, turbulence. I don't want to say civil war quite yet, but uh, how do you keep 40 million people locked in their homes? they got to go to the store. they got to go get the mail. Some of them have businesses they have to take care of even if they're not open to the public there are all a million reasons why people have to leave their homes i i this is they are using this so viciously on the general public i only hope the public wakes up to the fact that this is brutal socialism what's going on here and it's going to get worse and worse Jordan, go ahead. Uh, it's very difficult, if not impossible, for me to one-up uh, Jeff Rents and find something that he doesn't already know. But oh. I was wondering, have you uh, are you aware of a book that was written some, I think it was 31 years ago, back in 1981, 39 years ago. Uh, the guy's name was Dean Kutz, K-O-O-N-T-Z. N-T-Z. Yeah, I posted that uh, little excerpt. And there's another book out there with a very similar excerpt in it. Not word for word, but it says the same basic thing. And it was written not quite that far back, but I think it was in the late 80s or early 90s. Yes, Yeah. and I am. And tell the people about it, because that's that's a fascinating thing. 
Yeah, well, like I said, I didn't think I was going to be able to up, up, up you one, but, uh, <laughs> I figured you probably had already heard about this, but it was interesting to me that back in That's, 1981, yeah. this author wrote and he said, quote, around the year 2020, a severe, uh, a severe illness will spread throughout the globe attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments in the year 2020. Severe illness. And then he said, almost as also, almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will be suddenly vanished as quickly as it arrived. It will then come back and attack again and 10 years later, then it will disappear completely. I just thought that was interesting. He announced that 2020, a severe illness, will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and bronchial tubes, relating to uh, and resisting all known treatments. Almost all, almost more baffling than the illness itself would be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived. And I don't so, think... Uh yeah, I, I ran the uh, clip. I posted it. It's very interesting. There's another book with a clip, but I don't know that I'll be able to find it. There are two with similar forecasts. I don't think it's going to vanish. I think that part of the forecast is is off. However, that said, and in as much as this is really SARS 2.0 and upgraded dramatically, uh, SARS disappeared. It came back a little bit in the second wave, and then it just it vanished. SARS is gone, yeah. and there's still no vaccine for SARS. They just SARS. They gave up on trying to make a vaccine for SARS uh, because it was gone. And then there was MERS, MERS, and then MERS disappeared. So, do these things have kill switches built into them, genetically speaking, or was there some other way of getting them to go away? This is clearly a highly developed biological tool. We'll call it a weapon. It's a bioweapon. That's what coronavirus is. I, I've got a video up there. It's in uh, It's in the headlines now, and it's oh, about 15 stories down, and it says you must watch this video. It's the best one-hour conversation I've yet to see about what's going on and what this virus is going to be used to do. And I was, as I mentioned briefly, told about this you know, a little, maybe a year ago, uh, by someone very highly placed. And I don't have that many sources like that. But, uh, right into my ear, I was hearing things I couldn't believe. Uh, did Dean Kuntz know, or was it just a lucky guess? Don't know. But SARS did, as you remember, vanish, essentially vanish, in a very short period of time, which is interesting in and of itself. Go ahead, Jordan, please. Well, I was just going to say, I just think it's interesting because we know that there's America has been the center for the, the victim of all kinds of political, diabolical, demonic depravity for years because of our freedom. Somebody really does not like the fact that we have declared ourselves to be a free people. And it comes from the fact that we have, we have shown the world that if a people get together, if people will stick together, we showed the world back in the 17, late 1700s, if the people will stick together and stand together, they can overthrow the tyrant of the King of England. And, uh, and we can do something to protect ourselves and bring ourselves into a land of freedom and liberty and justice and honor. And so somebody is very unhappy with that concept of freedom and liberty and people being free to do what they want because the powers that be, the the organized criminal powers in this world, are not happy with people who are calling themselves free. They want to make sure you are never free. 
And, of course, we could sit and talk for hours about how unfree we really are in this world. We're not free. We're nothing but slaves. And I've talked about the difference between the United States of America and the United States Corporation that was formed in the 1870s. And we are nothing more than corporate entities today. We are nothing more than a business. And this is why we tell each other to mind your own business. (laughs) <laughs> We're, each and one of us is a, essentially a, uh, a, a corporation. Uh, yeah, and, and they have certificates on each one of us. So when people die, they, they, the one percenters, there's value in each one of us, and they can cash us in when we die individually, cash in that certificate for value. This is what they do. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, but... It's true. No, it's absolutely what they do. That's precisely what happens. And this is why when you're born, you get a birth certificate. That's it. Because when a ship pulls into a harbor, she all ships are female. And so when a ship pulls into a harbor, <laughs> she parks at her birth. And so yeah. if you're going to catch a ship somewhere, yeah. you got to find out what birth the ship is in. And so every piece of every item coming off the ship that's going to be brought to a new country for money is a, it has to have its own certificate of manifest. It's called a birth certificate. And since you were born into this country, you were born not into a country, you were born into a corporation, you have to have a birth certificate because your mother brought you into and told the government she signed the birth certificate, which is a, it said, doesn't say parent. It says informant on your birth certificate where your mom or father signed the birth certificate. It says, it says inform- informant? Really? Yeah, informant. When and did so this start? Your mother was informing the corporation called United States. I'll be damned. She has produced a new product that you need to own. <laughs> yeah, and so then the hospital will then put a uh a roll of black ink on your on your feet on your yeah. foot yeah. and put your foot up on the paper and implant implant your foot's design on the paper so that they now can say that they own your soul. And so the whole idea of the birth certificate is that you are a certified product of a maritime admiralty corporation and you are owned by that corporation. This is why you're not free. You have to pay fines and tickets and you have to be in compliance and you have to ask permission and you crawl on your knees because we have something called the, the statue of liberty. It's not the statue of freedom. It's the statue of liberty. Liberty is what a sailor gets when he pulls into port. If you leave the ship, you got liberty. That doesn't mean you're free. It means you better be back when you're supposed to be, period. No, in, no there's no. It's like taking a dog uh, for a walk. I get it. Yeah, that's right. And so they let you go for, for a little walk for a day or so, but you better be back when you're supposed to because you don't have freedom. You are owned as a product. You are part of the company. And therefore, you have to be back when you're told because you have liberty, not freedom. And so we're finally, I mean, I could sit and talk, and I've done that before, about all the words and the terms that are given to us that we use every day. It never occurred to us what these words mean. There's a reason why all ships, rocket ships, sailing ships, flying ships, All ships are considered to be female. And, I mean, I could get into some of the more off-the-wall stuff about the idea that ships are female. Why? Because she delivers the product. That's why when you're getting on a plane, you are a product and you're being transported and you're paying money to transport your body, which is a product on the maritime law, and therefore she, the ship, is going to be transporting you from one place to another for money and you paying the money. And so it's a very interesting system in which we today are living, which is nothing more than a communistic 
corporate communistic system that we have come to understand is the way life is. But it's not the way life is. This has been foisted upon us because we're ignorant, ill-informed, and unread. And it's frightening because of the implications for the future of what our well, children how we've are been, going to Look up. how we've been prepared for this, Jordan. In 1950, the average high school graduate can outperform the average college or university graduate in terms of knowledge and general wisdom of the society, the culture, the political system we live under. Of course, things have changed. By the way, the second author, and I got an email, thank you for that, but I had just found it before. Sylvia Brown, who has a rather checkered reputation, the late prophetess, uh, put out a book called End of Days, Predictions and Prophecies About the End of the World. And in her book, she puts with no attribution that very quote from the Dean Kuntz 1981 book that you read. It's on one, it's on page 312 of her book. I don't know if she gave him credit later, but it's certainly not on the page I'm looking at. In and around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments. Almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived attack again 10 years later and then disappear completely. Now, that was from the Kuntz book, uh, but this Sylvia Brown book, I just don't see any attribution. But we just gave yep. him attribution, so there we go. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> yep. This is uh, really a remarkable so, thing. We've uh, talked about these things before, but I hope all of you who may be new to Jordan Maxwell's brilliance are really getting it uh, from what he's telling us. It's right there. Well, and I, I'll tell you what, it's really startling to me. When I read from uh, Jacques Vallée's book about the Pharaoh who was guided yeah. by an extraterrestrials, yeah. a silver disc above his head, and he was told to found a religion based on the sun, and it became <laughs> known as sun worship, and ultimately Aton was the name of the sun god of Egypt, and the Jewish God is the tetragram Aton, right. and the symbol for the Aton was a swastika, and this is why you find in uh, in Israel today, different synagogues still have swastikas on the floor and on the walls. It's an extraordinary story of hidden symbolism and words and terms that we do when we are born into this world as a baby. Like Rodney Dangerfield said, I got my start in life as a baby, and I worked my way down from there. And Rodney so was today, we he was are so funny. To, oh, what a comic. yeah! And but it's so true. We got our start as a baby, and we have no idea in the world what we're doing, where we've come from. No. The world has been built all around you when you're born. You have no idea what you've come into, and you have no idea what is legal and what is lawful and what is right and what is wrong. You have no idea. You just go along to get along, and as a baby, you will grow and become, uh, you, know, you will begin to accept whatever you're seeing as a child. You're growing up, and... I began to see at a very early age in my life how adults had no idea in the world what was going on because I would ask them questions as a kid, six, seven, and eight years old. They they would look at me like with the, like a, a deer in the headlights. They had no idea in the world what I was seeing or what I was asking. Right. And so I realized then that adults do not know what's going on. They just give you their opinions based on what, upon what their fellow man has given them, what their That's parents right. told them, what the guys at work have said, what the people they, they hang out with, the friends, what uh, the let's, friends think. Let's also throw in there the government schools dumbing yep, down our schools. young people to unprecedented levels. Absolutely incredible, our ignorance today. And as I said, even in the state of Arizona, we had a big demonstration here for weeks on end where the teachers in Arizona were all out in the streets wearing red outfits, red tops. Unbelievable. Yeah, they don't even know what they're doing, most of them. They have not a clue. No idea. 
None. Red for Ed was the name yeah. of the, was the they name. Don't, of. They don't know. It's just beyond. And they have no idea red was a symbol for communism. I mean, the communists were referred to as reds. Of course. And red for Ed yeah. means communism for education in, in Arizona. So we have an Arizona educational system that is being run, organized, directed, and conducted by Marxist communists. And they have no idea in the world what is going on and how it works and what the words and the symbols mean. It's just extraordinary how much we don't know. And and I don't know where our country is going to go with this kind of ignorance. I think it's going into uh, socialist bondage is where it's going. That's where it's going. There's no doubt about it. Because you remember Russia and the communism was called the USSR, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR. And uh, the Beatles, the way uh, they they had the song, back in the USSR, how lucky you are to be back in the USSR. And why were they called Beatles? Because the beetle was a symbol of a rising sun. That was a symbol in Egypt. Was the scarabasaka? The scarabasaka was a particular kind of beetle that would roll the dung up a hill and let it roll back down and go back down and get it and roll it up the hill and let it roll back down by itself until it finally became perfectly round. And that was a symbol that the communists used for the the revolution of, of the world, the round Soviet symbol for the, the, the Scarabasaka. And therefore, we had a group coming over here, bringing a new revolutionary kind of thinking and music, and they were called the Beatles, the Scarabasaka, a symbol for world communism. And that's exactly what it brought, because now today, all of our youth around this country are into all kinds of communistic ideas, philosophies, religions, and incredible cults and sects and cults that are put there purposely to you know to misguide our people and i I've, I've been talking about this for so long it's just incredible that it's still around and it surely seems to be working because so many people do not see it you can't fight against something you don't even know exists no and well, so that's, that's part of the dumbing down. They're, they're blind, Jordan. They don't, they cannot see. They don't have the intellect to do it. All they do is stare at their screens and react. This is not a proactive society anymore. It's a reactive. No. Pavlov would be howling with laughter, if not delight. Oh, God, yes. I know Pavlov's dog and all that stuff. What a story it is. And on my website, I would tell the world, on my website is Jordan Maxwell Show, S-H-O-W. You need to put the word show in if you're going to my website because there are websites out there that are not mine, but you're using my name to make money. So if, if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing and go to my website, it's jordanmaxwellshow.com. <clears throat> That's my website. And when you go on jordanmaxwellshow.com, you will see an advertisement for another website, which is even more important. And it's called Jordan Maxwell Research Society. I'm putting all of my research, all the audio, videos, books, free books, free, uh, free downloads of oh, books. That's, that's uh, just a treasury. Wonderful. And the, and, and the incredible uh, uh, articles and there's, there's, a, there's a series of articles there called articles of uh, interesting articles and you will see articles there that no one has incredible articles showing you things that you've never heard before about the government you live under and the world you live in and where it all came from is extraordinary stuff and I've been told to keep it uh, t- keep it private, and that's why I have to put it into a research website because I was told by my lawyer friends to keep this off the web 
in the public eye where the public could go to it, but put it into something private so that it can prove that it's a private inf- information. So I'm just saying that this is something people might want to do. Go to my website, Jordan Maxwell Show, and, and join my research website. Thank you again, Jeff, for letting oh. me come on, and we'll talk later. Jordan, we will, and it's 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 so much information out there, and and you are a, a true living monument to intellectual brilliance. And I use the word again. Thank you for sharing, as always. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you much. Bye bye, Mr. Maxwell, the one and only. All right, we'll be right back with more. Hang on. 